Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. In one of my first corporate dev jobs, I got assigned to work in the cloud, and I learned very quickly that I didn't know a lot about the Linux file system. I thought I was knowledgeable by way of my proficiency in the Mac terminal, but I found out quickly there's more to know than that, like the directory layout. What's the purpose of all these directories in Linux? Well, I think this is essential for any dev, and I'm gonna teach it to you in under four minutes. Let's get started. First, we have the BIN directory. Stands for binary and includes the binaries or executables required for the system to function. We all use these basic binaries like ls, makedir, rm, or cp. However, modern Linux systems will put these in the user bin and then have bin point to user bin for fear of something breaking if deleted. So if I look where these commands are, we'll actually get the user path. Next, we have SBIN, which is similar to the bin directory, but contains applications only a super user would need. Note the S, like delete user, which removes a user or group from the system. We would only want a super user running that. Next, we have the user directory, USR. This is actually where the home directory used to be in the early days. Today, it can contain a long list of things that needs to be shared by apps and services. However, there's a path that may ring a bell known as the user bin folder or user local bin folder. You'll find many binaries in user local bin or user bin like Docker, kubectl, Python, AWS, Go, etc. Remember this folder. Next, we have the OPT directory. This stands for optional and is where software that you build and compile sometimes lands. So it's reserved for all the software and add-on packages that are not part of the default installation. And applications go into the opt bin directory and libraries in the opt lib. However, some devs will opt for the user bin folder instead. Next, we have the etc folder pronounced Etsy. Historically, this has been a dumping ground for unhomed system files, but now it's an important folder in where you'll find system-wide configuration files. Have you installed a new program? Well, the config files will be here. For example, .conf files. Next, we have the home directory. Home is where your user personal directory will be. For me, it would be at home Travis, or on AWS, home EC2 user, or Ubuntu, you'll see a home Ubuntu, and so forth. Next, we have the boot directory. These are files needed to boot a Linux computer. That's all you need to know. Leave it alone. We have the lib folder. This is where libraries are kept for system programs and binaries required to boot the system. We have the root folder, which is the home directory of the super user. Don't use it. Next, the temp directory. Just as it seems, it contains temporary files placed there by apps that are running. You can also store your own temp files like tar extractions, and you can interact with this directory without being a super user. Just remember to clean up after yourself. Next, we have the var directory. This contains logs at var logs. It also contains tasks, temp files between reboots, and is where the snap directory is if you're using Ubuntu. Next, we have this dev folder. This is not where you work at if you're a developer, but instead here you have device files. If you plug up a USB device, it'll probably show up here. And very similar to this, you have the media and mount directories. Mount or MNT, it's usually for mounting other file systems or storage devices for a short period of time and is not used very often nowadays. The media directory is where external storage will be automatically mounted when you plug it in and try to access it. So why then dev and media? Well, in simple terms, dev is the device that could be mounted on media. Media is the attached file system of the device to the file tree. And that's it. I hope you found this summary helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.